two different technologies that we that uh, you are largely uh, talking about in your in your previous answer uh the 75 i yeah. uh, pro- project uh, you have what is known as the aip yes. the air uh, independent propulsion plug uh, yeah. that is supposed to be uh, added in the submarines that essentially basically what it means um, on my brief understanding it's a diesel powered engine essentially yeah. uh, but it does not have to surface to grab air yes. as often so it sort of gives that submarine endurance so in yes. my head i like to sort of say it's like a pseudo nuclear submarine yeah. because it can stay under water for right. longer right and then you have the ssn project yeah. uh, which is nuclear powered attack submarines yes. uh, submarines that do not carry ballistic missiles yeah. but they are powered by a nuclear reactor yes. so they, they have the same endurance yeah. uh, but they are faster and yeah. they are like sort of a fighter jet basically yes. underwater underwater fighter jets underwater fighter yeah. jets yeah uh, so break down these two uh, yeah. technologies for us and a very crucial and big question for me yeah. why are we trying to attempt both technologies why not put all your eggs in one basket right. say that you know just, let's just go the nuclear way yeah. and invest heavily in yeah. nuclear powered attack submarines and build all of them that because I, if i'm not wrong i could be wrong you can correct yeah. me i think the us submarine fleet is yeah. totally nuclear powered right no no good question uh, dev and uh, you know uh, so to explain your the first part of the question is that there are there is only one kind of nuclear uh, uh, submarine a true submarine is actually a nuclear submarine okay everything else is a submersible right okay. <laughs> so conventional submarines are essentially submersibles right they uh, submerge they operate underwater for a fixed period of time and because they are diesel electric so what they do is they have a diesel engine uh, which runs underwater which then charges the um, batteries mm. Uh, and that battery gives them the underwater endurance right. but the thing is that the diesel engine is an air breathing engine mm. so every 48 hours the submarine needs to either surface or it needs to stick up a mast uh, a snorkel uh, from which it will draw air to run its diesels mm. so that the diesels can charge the batteries so when the submarine is running underwater it's actually running on batteries on right. battery power it's okay. like really silent so it's like a uh, it's like you know all of us with our phone charge you know looking for a charging point so that's how submarines are usually underwater after about 48 hours mm. underwater you know so they're looking for a charging so they have to kind of get up for that air that breath of air and that is when you're most vulnerable yes. right because today with the kind of sensors that are available you have uh, infrared sensors where you will have not just uh, a manned uh, lrmps aircraft but you will also have drones which mm. can cover vast swaths of the ocean and all it needs to see is that little heat spot there there's a little uh, red dot in the middle of the ocean what's that well, that's a snorkeling submarine right mm. so that's when the submarine is most vulnerable and uh, all technologies over the last 100 years all submarine building technology has been to increase the underwater endurance of the submarine and you had all kinds of things the, the, the germans of course the germans it has to be the germans they are the first ones to come up with this electric boat mm. the electro boat thing and the aip you know they had a uh, something called the walter peroxide engine which would generate oxygen underwater okay. which would then you know run the diesel underwater right. so you didn't have to surface for air so they would always look at extending the life of their underwater thing but of course the americans uh, were one step ahead they uh, you know perfected the atomic weapon and one of the byproducts of that uh, and of course uh, the nuclear reactor was the undersea nuclear reactor so you they had the first uh, nuclear powered submarine which is the nautilus uss nautilus which entered service in the 50s um, and ever since the americans have not looked back the russians of course uh, uh, caught up after them and today we have just five countries six countries including india which operate nuclear powered submarines and you know nuclear submarines are the ultimate <coughs> submarines they yeah. like i said they just they uh, once they sail out of port they can stay underwater almost indefinitely you never know where they are basically you don't know where they are they are out there they are underwater they are making uh, uh, you know air uh, they cracking sea water to get oxygen and uh, you know uh, they have unlimited literally unlimited steam uh, power uh, from the uh, uh, turbines that they are running Uh, and the nuclear uh, reactor which is used to power everything over there so they are they are almost power independent but what we're looking at is air independent propulsion basically extends the underwater stay of mm. a submarine from about 48 hours when you need to come up for your breath of air to charge your diesels to something like 10 days 12 right. days you know based on how big how many uh, how big your uh, uh, aip plug, plug essentially is so that's what we are looking at uh, 
We're looking at a number of technologies. There is the the Mesma technology, which the French have. Uh, we have a, um, uh, a lithium ion uh, technology that's also there for AIP. You have the DRDO that's working yes. on its own uh, AIP uh, capsule, which will be retrofitted into the Scorpion class submarines when they come for their refits. All six of them. So there's a a fair bit of um, uh, uh, react, you know, technology that's going into uh, AIPs, but these are essentially, you know, poor man's uh, alternatives to nuclear uh, uh, propulsion. I was going to uh, say Jugard, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that word again. <laughs> Dave, you like that word? I know yeah. that. <laughs> so the um, uh, but the thing is that you know there are certain countries that do not operate conventional submarines. Yeah. The Americans don't. Uh, the British don't. Uh, the French don't. Okay. Right. The Chinese and the Russians do because of their very unique geography. Right. If you look at China, there are a lot of choke points. There are a lot of shallow water areas. Okay. So primarily, you need conventional submarines when you're looking at uh, operating in shallower reaches. Uh, you know, uh, choke points, those kind of things. These are all great for operating conventional submarines. And we, our logic is also the same that we. Okay do need a large number of conventional submarines. We do need nuclear-powered attack submarines. We needed them not yesterday, but day before yesterday, if you ask me.